afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting and everything amazing propaganda cast with me, your host, Imperial Dane, the one, the only Master Propaganda. Off here to a one versus one own lost glider in the south. It is a cat fighting for the Soviet Union, socialism, the Red Army, taking on the role here of the tenth mechanized core in the north. It is Ungai from the actual Ungai, not the guy pretending to be him, by a slightly changed name, which apparently is Tiramisu. Fighting here for the Wehrmacht, Germany, Deutschland. Rolling out here with the Hammond Göring Fallschirmpanzer Division with Spearhead. Festung Armour and Lead Troops, Dublin Infantry Panzerfaust versus Airborne Troops, Armoured Assault and Gart Motor. Coordination Tactics with Anti Tank Grenade Infantry and Mine Bulletins there. For Gat, double country start here for him. Double Pioneers MGM 4 to the Fun Guy, from though we got the Infantry Company, so it's not quite been a going to be a tier 2 rush there from him. Got Samix on the curve point. Note the way it's position makes it a bit harder, I think, for the enemy to use them against Gat here. So he can some mostly attack, but he can some defend from attacks here and to the extent there. Well, at least that's the theory, I imagine. We'll have to see how it works out here for Gat. Third comes on the way there for him. Engineers going there for the fuel point. Kind of deals up there for Ungarth and Gat. Quickly popping into just in case that uh, Ungarth and him might be trying to rush the fuel point and sort of quickly spot that out. Comes coming towards the other church again. Bit of active recons there by Gat, even as he advances the front line. He's just trying to make sure he doesn't get any surprises there. MG42, they could be engaged in the conflict. They're now going here for Ungarden's car farm there. Basically, he's checking for what he's about to try and do himself against Plasma. Plasma. It also just checks to see if the path is clear then for the car points. There's a lot of purpose to that move there. MG42, they meet his out for a gunner loss there. <laughs> as you now switch towards the car point, I imagine. Sam makes here by the central victory point. Third conscript moving in there. Can the versus conscripts here? Bit of skirmishing here. At the same time, he's sort of trying to uh, make sure his opponent doesn't immediately just sneak up with an MG42 into the house. And at what point, if he tries to go for that, he's going to be in a really, really bad spot. But, you know, he's also trying to you know, just keep an eye on things there. How to see what the machine is up to and then try and sneak up if possible with the second conscript there. So, nice play there, but there you go. Now you actually catch the machine in there with two conscripts doing some damage there, forcing it to reposition again. The situation here for Uncraft is getting a bit dicey. Fourth country court there for Gat and the tenth mechanized core. More can here for Ungraft and MG42 is in a really bad spot. He's threatening the carve bomb, but he's not quite hitting it yet. More country at the west side here. Might try and flank about here. We got Pioneers as engineers. And there you go. Nice heading for the carve bomb there, though he's dispatching only one score to do that. Thinking he either doesn't need more, he might be too risky to commit more if there's another machine gun out there from Ungraven. Instead, he's committing more force here to the west. We got Pioneers about to hit by the conscripts. Back here, nothing further going on there for Gat, and similarly in Ungarven space, we got the double conscript, Benavides, double Pioneers, and one MP42 so far. We'll obviously see what it ends up with. But there you go, Pioneers versus Conscript, the Conscript went in despite the Pioneers usage here of a dead, I think, horse. Oh, is it cow? Oh, it's a cow. It's a dead cow. They have models for both in games at times, you know, is it a cow, is it a horse? It was a cow in this case. Mine's here. Briefly attempted, all the way, the west side being secured, but there we go. Ungarden taking advantage of the confusion now to go straight here for the curve point, hitting Gat there where he was a bit initially worried. But now is apparently not quite so red machine, and I think he'll have to retreat there, maybe he gets a bit of healed up there, it's in a pretty poor position. Nothing further happening here for Ungarden. He's planning for snipers, I mean snipers feel like tend not to be part of Ungarden's build order very much. But he could be going for it there again. Another gun the squad, another MG42, I think also work out nicely for him. Still using the MG42 despite being incredibly unhealthy. I mean, one good flank or one good Molotov could cost Ungarven there's MG42, which would be a pretty uncomfortable loss here in the early game. And we got a medic bunker up there for Ungarven in his base. Car on there has been secured. Gun these immediately retreating. He's still hovering with a very light early build in some ways. Two gun these two pioneers, one MG42, nothing else further, but at the same time, isn't taking out. It does beg the question here what Ungarven plan versus Gat is. This does seem a bit unclear. We got Cancer versus Pioneers. Pioneers will be losing out on that one. Medics on the way then. There we go. We do get one more infantry squad. Ungarven is not just going to be stalling here to fast away. I'm going for two lot of tier one, but Gat Meemar is putting pressure on it. Putting the pedal to the metal. There you go. Medics ready here for Ungarven. He could also take up now, which would not be a bad idea. And of course, the MG42 is going to need that healing. I mean, that's probably the one that's most in need of it. More than anything, Pioneers are clicking wiped out with the Conscript Engineers. Gatler definitely moving for a wipe, and if you can't get to certainly help him. But in this case, though, Fortune favors Ungarven just a bit, and a wipe down the Pioneers is avoided. Do take the second Pioneers, could have put him quite as bad there for Ungarven in some ways. 
but of course been uncomfortable. And there we go, we got airborne troop tactics here for Gat. Calling in an airdrop weapons there to supply his current scripts with more firepower. In theory, also the engineers, but most players so far I've seen do not bother with the engineers to get the SVT 40s. But I imagine there's going to be some countries down here. There we go. We also got medics up there for Gat, and that'll be some SVT 40 semi automatic rifles there for the current scripts, increasing their firepower notably here. Fuel point there being cut off. Nice work there by Gat as the Hunger Garden is slowly counterattacking. Also got Gunners moving towards the center. We don't have any tech up there for undriving yet, though that's starting to look... Oh, there you go. A bit worrying. And another drop already here for Gat. He's just calling in the weapons as fast as possible to further increase his firepower against the fascists. And there you go. Upgraded country there as the Gunnadies. Count on TK, so he makes some motion against an SVT-40s. Gunnadies, I think, may not stand the best chance. And there you go. Wisely fall back. Country there as Gunnadies up north. We'll ever see if we can unguard man to upgrade his men soon. But obviously, he's not going to be getting any SVT-40s. Could they even pick them up if they wanted to? They could actually. Fancy that. Though, of course, no player I think is going to be that daft as to try and call them out in the middle of a battlefield. But in theory, like, if you were to, like, rush in there with a half track, pop out the gun, and then grab this with your 40s, you could seemingly do it. It would be funny, but, you know, the magical question here would it be damn worth it? I don't think so, but it would be funny. It would be funny. Anyway, it's going to lead to the conscript close. As we fall to the tearing through, they're going to lead at a rapid pass. They're going to lead to doing their best to give the conscripts a good beating in return. Going to be quite close here, though. And then it looks like the conscripts are the ones winning. Up north, the conscript went down. He's arrived He was too preoccupied with the engagement here. And that cost Gat quite dearly. Got another weapons drop. That is three drops in a row. That's actually quite a bit there. And you throw to grab the fuel point back. Back here, in reinforcement. Panzer going to do there for Angreifen and the Hammond Göring Fallschirm Panzer Division. Country charging forwards here. Engaging the Gunnadies there with some semi automatic weapons fire. Ready to advantage their fallen brethren. We got Montreal Panis as Angreifen. clearly worried about the Gatling down mines. And again, with mine bullets and stuff, that's only something even more worth keeping in mind. Take of there for Gat finally happening, and there you go. Final conscript squad since the other one got wiped. Being equipped there with those VT 40s. I think at this point he's otherwise setting up for the guards airborne troops, since you know they can be pretty good. And he, on a particular map like this one, he wanted to consider squad with submachine guns, since you know a six man submachine gun squad could be quite nasty. There we go. Quit infiltrating in there for the glorious motherland. Ready to give Ungarth and his merry, band of, merry bunch of fascists a bit of a hard time. Pan uses a conscript here, closing in eventually to this steadily. And go using the conscript in this case by way as bait. First charging them so they get immediately targeted by the Kennedys and moving up the guards airborne. In this case, just using the conscript basically to allow the guards airborne to flank into the church there. Nice tactical maneuver there. And there you go using the church, which can allow like, quite a bit of him to fire from the side there down on the Kennedys. If he had the munitions, he could of course upgrade with DP light machine guns, but he could go for the, just the submachine guns, which, you know don't cost anything for him to upgrade. But it seems like he's not quite keen on that. Back here, tank return command going out there for Gat. That'll probably be a fast teaser on the way for him. And Governor got nothing going on. Panzers, though, of course, can in a paint to upgrade with the Panzer if it becomes necessary. Maybe firing here between two different types of elite units here. And Governor's Panzer going to the era. Gats, guards airborne, and there you go, Gunnadies around with the light machine in the church behind the guards airborne, forcing them to retreat here rather than risking a total annihilation at the hands of Angreifen. Come to the ground, the eastern victory point, victory point wise, small lead here for Gat over Angreifen at the moment, it's using the western fuel point there. Back here, healing enforcement, T-70 soon available. Could also go for the half tech, which is something catching on more and more with Soviet players. Would be a bit cheaper fuel wise, maybe allow them to push for armor faster, but the T-70 certainly would be a bit more the conventional choice. Looks like another gun is what they got upgrade, but there you go. Can't from the SVT 40s moving on the other side. Take margin the gear is actually dragging attention there, engaging up close. Gun is taking losses. Can begin upgrading his gas or airborne there with DP light machine guns. Rather more German to cause them to retreat the console, as I think could have had a chance of beating the gun ideas. Console holding up here, guarding here a retreat point for the engineers. Close to being wiped out though, but uh, managed to avoid that one. Guns coming about here. Guards airborne grab here and there we go. We got the DP light machine guns on the way there for Gat. We got a T-70 on the way as well here for Gat and the Red Army. Pioneers right here by the Conscript Infantry Squad. 
Back here, troops in reinforcing. Nothing for. Oh, he has actually checked up. This is going to go for fast port armor core, which I imagine could lead here to a Ostwind being rushed out here by Angrafen. Or oh, rushed and rushed, but at least getting out a bit faster here, which would uh, be quite effective versus Scat, who's currently got no into tank weapons and only a T70 light tank. And the T70 light tank versus the Ostwind is not particularly favored there for Gat and the Red Army, as it should be. But there you go, Gat's holding up here by the cutoff point. T-70 still advancing here. Eastern Victory Point is there by Angarf and Andy Hammond Göring. We got S mines here by the Center Victory Point. Very nice. They've got mines to deal with that. Very nice response there by Gat. But you know, if he hadn't, that would have been pretty nice there for Angarf and stole down Gat a bit. And then again, the T-Sim likely just driven it, driven over them. So, Panzer there yet upgraded. He's sort of munitions for that. So Palmer Corps is going out there for Angarf. He could actually build the Austin right away. But he could actually, I think, get away with just going for the Panzer IV as well. But the Austin would be much more effective as all the infantry and the T-70. Simply due to a higher rate of fire. Gunnery is flanking up here. 14 kills. Engineer squad on the bad spot in the open as they try to clear out the minefields. So Palmer Corps almost done, they're using both Pioneer Scorts to rush the production of that one, very nice. And he can actually build a Panther right away as soon as he's done there. Or less. We'll have to see what ends up with the Van Kuyven. Panther there being forced away here. And we do get the Flak Panther. Again, he could have gone for the Panther Floyd, but besides the T-70 again, or the Ostwind for maximum infantry murdering and of course T-70 countering. That's a bold move there by Angarf, and Graf here could be nice with some of the mines that are still about. And then the guards are able to end up falling a bit behind here as uh, Angarf's advance is looking a bit relentless. MG4 tuning up, Panzer the healing and forcing Osman almost done. Field going away there for a gap in an obvious anticipation of Angarf getting out armor. But versus the Osman, he might actually want issues in the sixes and be able to keep better pace with the Osman. Oh, got a wipe. Took out the Pioneers there, and nice little kill there by Gat and the 10th Mechanized Corp. Got the flak pans out here for Angreifen. Got a field gun there, almost done for Gat. MG4 sitting up here, comes to there by the Eastern Fuel Point there. Within the range of fire, they just end up falling out at the point there, not intermediately just fully retreating. He's like going to set up, there we go, to sort of cover the point, making it harder for Angreifen to get it back easily. Flak pans moving ahead here. Will Gat be ready to receive this flak? Fiend, and there you go, engaging hits there. T-70 taking a lot of damage, down to half health already. In this regard, the Ostwin is a much better choice there for sort of dealing with T-70s. Again, due to its high rate of fire, meaning high DPS, of course. On the other hand, it's quite rubbish against medium armor in that department. Unless your opponent handles, say, the T-34 really poorly. But against T-70s, the Ostwin does quite well due to a high rate of fire and good damage. And, of course, good speed as well. So... Very nice pick there by Angreifen. Very much meet the locks down a lot of Gat's current forces. And can also be quite useful, of course, as anything down the road. And also useful as any air support. But down the road, of course, he wants more anti tank. Either Panzer Shrek or Stukes. Stukes, I think, would be better there. That way, you can also keep the Panzer Medias unupgraded. Guards there, though. Apparently, forgot about the Guards Airborne. Kept them on the carve point. But they just makes an easy target here for the Flak Panzer. Of course, means they end up doing zip. But there you go. Figure to the rescue here. Well, at least nearby to deal with it for the Flak Panzer. Still already close to veteran to one. Three kills. Get to treating by the car point is getting very uncomfortable as the gun losing cover crumbles in the face of a rifle grenade. Back hit troops reinforcing. Gat could theoretically try and take up. Or it could go for the issue in six to just help deal with the flat punch and the other armor. Ungrifle might be tossing at him. But it's going to need to reinforce those guards airborne, which is going to be slightly costly. Panzer there, though. That's one. Might want to keep them close to the Ostwin, so you're going to sort of get more benefits from that. Mortar on the way there for Angarf, and providing a bit of vital support there for those infantry and support weapons. Very good. Nice pick there. I do feel like the mortar tends to be a bit crucial to the Wehrmacht, so, you know, getting one is usually a good bet if you know how to use it. Or at least just know how to not use it too poorly. Mine's up here by the southern point there. T-70 murdering away, two kills. Flag pants almost fixed up. Troops are healing and forcing. Field gun guards moving ahead. 
healing and reinforcement. And we got Festering Armor here for Ungraven. Only one of the few players I can imagine going for it since he does have a propensity for liking stuff like the Pack 43. And you need to say though, getting a Flat Panzer surprise here from the Ostwind, which was sort of the last in the Flat Panzer 4 series. You also have the Wibblewind and the Möbelwagen Flat Panzers. Gunnelisa versus Conscripts. Lots of Gunnelisa, in fact, that's a easily one game chance since the Conscripts have actually 40 sand, not allowing them to match firepower with three Gunnelisa squads full of light machine guns. Come to the holder though by the Ospin and push back. Seven kills there. The Ospin is proving to be quite a pain in the start. They've got, we just can't easily contain at the moment. We've got a Stroop following up here, providing more support there. And then they can also work together. Plus, it's a bit cheaper there. And of course, there might also be party for Ungrad and Strand. You're just going for a mix of Stroogs and Ospin, in which case you can get more armor pieces out with more firepower. Though, of course, he has to manage more units. By the hand, again, it allows him to then focus down whatever he wants to do with very hard. Panzer is getting veteran D2, and he's going for Panzer Strikes now. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't do it there, but that's just me. In particular, when he's already going for the Strug and he's got the Ospin, don't know. I feel like Panzer Strikes now might be a bit much, but that's just me. Or at least just the ways the good Panzer going to do. You know. That's not saying you shouldn't go for them. I mean, they're still a pretty good upgrade. Garson in the face of the Flag Panzer quickly falling back. They're very close to Veterans 1. T72 kills half to Veterans 1. And there goes Sturmgeschütz 3, Ausführung G. Mobilized for frontline duty. Healing up there with the guards before they engage with the gun. These, of course, triple light machines. The T-Sim versus one gun. These scored with light machine guns is, you know, favorite there for Gat. But the flat panther, of course, as always, changes the arithmetic of war here and he neatly pounds back the guardsmen, or guards airborne, causing a few kills there. And the light machine will drop with the field gun that saves the day here for Gat, preventing a total collapse of the right flank. Stu hanging back and their pin mount machine being added. Very good. And the West counterattack going on. Mildly for Gat, they just recanning the fuel there. Does mean that Ungrav is actually more fuel now here than Gap, which is good for Ungrav, but a bit problematic there for Gap, who does have the Mechanized Armor Company up. At this point, he's upgraded all of his conscripts, so he can't upgrade them further. Like, you can only have the weapons, or you can't have the Mobilized, mobilized Reserve ability. I think that's in part just to avoid 7 man conscripts. There's really 40 bolts of 7 man conscripts with sub machine guns. So, I think that's the sort of the trade off there. Stu, them barring away. Panzer is heading for the center victory point, moving up the east side, or west side here with Conscripts, T-70 Engineers. Gun is heading up, they're upgrading. And up north here, flat Panzer with the Conscripts, 10 kills. Of course, in quite some staggering catches amongst the Conscripts, some nice damage. Mortified joining us, where they got the field moving up. Yeah, they can soon go for the T-34-6, which is going to be a problem for the Osfin, though. Plus the infantry. And there you go, he can go for it, and he does go for it there. So T-34, some 6 on way there for Gat and the 10th Mechanized Corps in his attempt to assail the positions of the Hamann Göring, Falchion, Panzer Divis and rushing them back to Berlin. And there you go, the Angravs bring up the big guns, the Pack 40 feet, heavy anti-tank gun. Not the heaviest anti-tank guns the Germans had, but they also had one for 128mm, same as the gun used in the Jagdtiger. Which was also raised rated as a field cannon. In fact, there exists a field cannon version of the Pack 43, meaning it could double as artillery. Little fun fact there. I believe, in fact, some of the divisions in Normandy, specifically the static infantry divisions, actually had Pack 43s in their artillery units, probably under the assumption they had to use them as, as artillery run and tank guns. Rocket strike in here. I think he was trying to take out the Pack 43 with it something. Not entirely sure what happened then, but that ended up being an easy target for the Flak Panzer. So I'm not entirely sure what happened there for Gat. Oh, he had some bigger hopes than uh, could be sort of redeemed. And there you go, T7 taking heavy damage here from the Ostwind and some other bits there. Possibly a mine. There we go. The T7 goes down. Oh yeah, it's the Pack for the Feed there, of course. The Pack for the Feed just forgot about it at the moment I see it. Like a complete idiot. Can it is here opening up? Got the T7 moving in there. A T34. The T7 is dead. Gating gonna is quite brutally, getting two kills immediately. Gonna in the southeast. Also in trouble here. Gat striking force there for the glorious motherland. But the pack for the feed is going to be a problem there for his armor as it can quickly devastate any tank plans there that Gat might have. Got a second guard squad moving in here. Will these be equipped with submachine guns or will they also be DP light machine gun men? 
I mean, certainly a lot of guard, uh, guards there, but with DP lap machine guns would, of course, be a problem there for Angrad Negos. Stug snaps Paul Dimitri. I'm sure the rest of the unit wishes it was the Yat Lobby, did it? Can't tell us the MD42. Closing in mid T2, we got the Pioneers being headed for the Western Victor fuel point. Austin moving about it patrolling. 15 kills, Veteran 2 that's where it gets really nasty. I'm grabbing there going for additional Panzer Gunner Dealer. I mean, particularly the pack for the fuel, I do feel like the Panzer X just feels like a weird choice, to be honest. Mortifying the counter there, Gas moving ahead here. Oh, Gas Airborne. Closing in Veteran 3 there, by the way, in the ace level. Grenade here off on the mortar. Oh, Shiza. Didn't do enough, and there you go, Flak Panzer to the rescue here. Hammering away there with this even higher rate of fire now, thanks to Vecini 2. Nice work there. Pioneers as engineers in the west. Comes to fighting over the point here, doing their best against Angraven's attackers, but uh, ultimately not enough. And the flat comes there pretty much would have clipped the deal all the way since the console stand no chance against that. One thing arriving though, guards here will have to abandon the church. It gets exposed to a heavy sermon of Teutonic flat fire. Feel gonna make use of a nice crate or gap there in the cemetery walls to get off a hit there. So gap there. Might want to bring up Nation 6 just to help deal with the flak pans a bit faster. One to tank five pound that regard would be pretty good. Four kills on the T-54 swing six so far. Panzer is flanking T-54 swing six on the move as well. Panzer Shrek's flying, but not quite hitting anything. Flak Panzer moving ahead here. Troops hanging back in the base for Gat healing and forcing. Guard squad hanging about in the or Gat's airborne squad hanging about in these panzer to pursue the T fit force and six and having much luck. Second panzer squad there moving in here as well. Gat finding himself in the defense on the face here of a renewed assault here by Angreifen and the Hammond Gun. But there you go, Comes moving in against the gun these packed up here, possibly by the guards airborne. And yes indeed, they might want to move them a bit closer and get them upgraded. Panzer Eger Panzer there, just hammering away. There's two goals, so seemingly landing another hit there. Very good. Finding in the center, there's immediately disrupted here by the Austrian and the MD42. And Comscore ended up being wiped out by Rav Grenade. There was too much going on for Gat, and he didn't realize that hurts. But it's great for Ungrab. Another T-54 from 6 away for Gat. But he's certainly suffering some staggering casualties by 9 so this has hit a bit of a low point as Ungrab is just relentlessly pummeling away at him. Flat comes there routing all of the guards airborne. 16 kills. Got a wipe though here. He wasn't paying attention and did lose. I think the pants gonna lose what was just been called in. That's a bit of waste there by Angraf, and though Sony allows gap to close the gap between the two, which is good for him. Angraf going for tier 4, a bold move here. Of course, just go for more armor now, but you know, if you can get out a Panther and Gat can't respond to that, then I mean, obviously, Angraf in a really good spot. Push here for the pack for the fleet. Almost got a wipe here already. And he's moving up into tank to help destroy. We always got Telemans up here. The nice spot there by Angraven. There you go. Pack for the fleet is and he's going to immediately just try and destroy it. Panzer is moving in. Stug moving in. Flag Panzer nearby as well. Push for the centers. Hold here by the MD42 and the Flag Panzer. Almost got the pack for the fleet here. Guards are doing with guards airborne. I keep calling them guardsmen because I'm used to guardsmen only having DP light machine and be honest with it. But I'll wait. Pack for the fleet is stored there. Nice flank there, by the way, by a gap. Very nice flank. Pioneers moving up here. Guards here, but doing with the guns out the house. T-54, they're in low on health. Stuke moving ahead. Other T-54 could flank in there. Got Osman's in trouble. Could see the Osman go down, which would be huge here for Gat. Pioneers being wiped out. Further catches here as Gat's flank assault has caused quite a bit of grief there for Angraven. Might lose the T-34 from the section. We get the Osman plus the pack for the free. That will work out quite nicely. There we go. Oh, Stuke also down to low. Less than half health. Guards have to, guards everyone have to retreat. T-54 going for it, and there you go, gets the flag. No, oh, the flag pants are still operable. It has a tiny self of health. It can still get to safety. Can Ankar and salvage it? Oh, no. Guarded in the end there. And now it's going to get escape away with the T-54 from 6 there. That uh, turned out to be a pretty good engagement there and there for Gat. Caused quite a few cash with the Ankar. In fact, wiped out all of his pioneers. Didn't get in the infantry, though. Took out the pack for defeat and an Osvind. That's really good there for Gat. Certainly helped close the gap there that Angraven has managed to build up between the two. They so might end up losing the field gun again. And we point Angraven might try and steal it, but he still end up destroying a lot of Angraven's, you know, quality tools there. DP Light Machine, they dropped again. Second squad equipped with them as well. 
These guys really got butter fingers. Actually, my, no, that's not in years. They still got one. T-54 bombs being taken out. Needs to get to safety here. Still some time away from another. T-54 from the 6 They could try and go for the issue from the 6 here. We'll let's see what it ends up with. Still charging forwards, but there you go. Got the gas moving in. Can't be charging forwards well as well. Might cause them to be more cautious. Another DP light machine, light machine being equipped on those gasmen. And these two, we got gasmen the fire here from the mortar. So they got the fuel upon them under neutral. And there we go. Despite being guards airborne, some of the finest infantry the third army can master. They still apparently need those little things in their child's have with the mittens so they don't keep dropping them. Guys been charging forwards there. Stoop there. Six kills. Five infantry. One armor. Don't underestimate what the light machine can do for Stoop, to be honest. Another guard table. Wow, we got triple guard table squads out here for Gat versus Undrive. That's a lot. I'm guessing that one's going to be equipped with DP light machines as well at this point. I don't think he's going to go for sub machine guns. Closer to getting the MD42 actually wiped out, which would be great for him. Falls back here from the eastern fuel pump, so it's about to grab both, which we're going to now get to really push in a lot of armor and can actually go for another T-34 now, and probably should. Fresh flag pants out here for Angarov, no, clearly a believer now in the might of the Ostwind. T-34 rushing ahead here, close to fetching two. There we go, Panzer Jaegers routed. Back here, troops are reinforcing. No sign of additional armor yet here for Gat. Of course, ungarden has got his slack pants in the field. He's moving up the eastern side, basically figuring he's more likely to encounter infantry with that. I think armor support there onto tank support, which can easily deal with the flak panzer, though. And then moves all to center without any end. Might actually carry the T-34-76. So there we go. Quick rear hit on the T-34. Most of the other shots, though, basically bouncing off, as you can see there. So again... You would basically have to allow the team for the to have the rear console exposed to the offspring, which would need to be highly veteran, I think, to have a good enough rate of fire to actually do enough damage to them to the T-34. Stug there close to veteran 2. He's basically, I think, trying to clear lines of fire here by destroying the hedges there. A bit slow work. And he'd probably love to have the docks in there, strategic reserves, instead of just, you know, laying down demo charges to blow up all of that, or satchel charge with the pioneers. I'll be quick grenade on the MD42 flag panzer joining in here. Ace airborne guardsmen need to get out of there fast. Before the flag panzer annihilates them, we got another T-54 on the way. The T-54 from 6 though. He has control with the Stuke and it is moving in there. That T-54 I think it's not going to make it out. The Stuke has good range and there you go. Main gun is out. That very much seals the deal here. There we go. T-54 from 6 down, and Guinea's rounded. He got once more, finding himself in a bad spot here in the face of Ungarven's Saxon. There you go, and he's. Gat's actually managed to steal one of Ungarven's mortars, in fact, his only mortar. I think Gat could have benefited from a mortar of his own sooner, but I will. Oh, that got wiped. Still, close one there that he almost got away with. Quick field gun bash. Now we got a command tank out for Ungarven here, so that's a bit going on there. Need that uh, Stug fully repaired here, though it is close. Comes coming about here, going deep into Uncovered's flanks here. Probably looking to distract him and buy time to do what he also wants elsewhere. Field coming up, backed up here by the guards airborne. T Fed Post next in. Going in aggressively, of course, need to be careful not to extend and not be able to get out of there. Moving in the east, going to grab back the mortar, but there you go. Uncovered doing his best to seize back the mortar for the German army. Panzer Jaeger's rushing ahead here, backed up by the flag panzer and the Stug. Guards able to do when they can. Almost got the eastern fuel point, almost got the western fuel point reconnected as well. They got the infantry in the church, continued the nuisance there for Angarden to deal with. Solidify there on the church, looking to wreck it, or at least dislodge the MG42. 274 was 254, pretty close in terms of victory point between the two sides. And Guinea's right from the east there by two kilometers of sports wing in there from Ungarven and the Hammond Girling Falchi and Panzer Dish Sean. Guards airborne moving ahead here. 
He can soon go for another T-34-76. So again, he could consider H-5, so H-6 is here. Both, I think, would be viable choices. Whereas what's on the field inside, there's an insect buzzing about. I'm just trying to deal with that. Flat plans there quickly on the scene, backed up with the Stromger shots. All supported by the command tank. T-54 though arrives here to try and surprise it, and then ends up being surprised by a lot of shots in the face that most of them don't penetrate. Push through the centre here with Kongsberg and Guards Airborne. West side's in, in Guinea's moving up. The other two units are either in the east side or back in the base getting reinforced healed. At least in theory they should be. Gat can go for more armor now, but the question is what will he go for and will he go for it? That's fine, guys. We got, of course, a mix of command tanks, Austrians, and Stukes. Not a single regular Panzer IV, though, just the command version. Not something you see very often. Again, I suspect here part of it is just, you know, Austrians and Stukes can sort of work reasonably well together now to get more armor, but on a, shall I say, lower cost basis. You will have to man handle them better, but again, you can sort of get away with it. Guards airborne are clustering right out there. We have a loss there for Gatton Ego moving in the streets to try and block the retreat path a bit. And. Oh, oh! He actually gets away. That's pretty damn lucky. Panzer X moving in a grenade fight, but didn't do much damage into the Panzer X and then will return the favor to the T3 Force Room 6. Grenade here on the field gun, showing what real explosives can do. Nope, but oh, it's actually crewed by Guards airborne. Now the T3 Force Room 6 on the way there for. Gat. That's got X man is not a small victory point lead here while Angreifen. Grenadier marching forward and they've got guards airborne nearby. But right into the flak panzer and an awful lot of grenadiers. Quickly routing the entire lot. T Fed Fossum's sitting up here, troops healing reinforcing back here for Gat. 27 kills on one of those squads is pretty impressive. Going for that calf point, very good move. I do feel like Gat wants to get out some machine guns. Again, you can get a mortar, I think it'll also be quite helpful for them versus Angreifen. But so far, no sign of either of those except the one he tried to steal from his opponent. Flat Panzer with the T-34. We got the new Panzer X moving up as well here. Eight kills for and one in the Flat Panzer. Panzer X popping in there, but they can't really do anything against it unless the T-34 shoots a hole here on the wall, at which point they can fire back. Back here, troops in reinforcing. Can't go right here by the Grenadiers. T-34 is set pursuing the Grenadiers, almost wiping them out. And annihilated. Small win there for Gat, though he's still uh, in a bit of a sticky spot once more. He's got none of the victory points, he's barely got any of the resource points, and uh, well, armgram has got plenty of armor. And he's bringing up another Sturmgeschütz, it's a true believer in the might of the Stug. Excellent. Picks up the T-34, some six guards airborne heading westwards here. Still a kind of interesting to see someone actually go for three full squads of them. So far, most players I've seen have just gone for one or two, but three is definitely quite a lot. I think I would like to see at least one of them upgrade with some machine guns for some good flank action, just murdering infantry fast. T for the Stug, Pepsi 2 by the way, Schutzen added. Also, a tiny rate of fire bonus. But again, it's negligible, similar to the armor bonus, it just puts it slightly below a Panther 4 in terms of armor. Guards airborne here being hammered by the flak panzer and the command tank there. T for the wing of field gun as well here. Second stroke on the sunny of Angreifen and the German army. Air got right in the Sturm with the T for the by the Sturm Gishets, halfway to the ace level. And we go, almost got one of the T for the force, a bit of a loss there for Gat. He's still not bringing up any assault guns or tank destroyers. I don't really feel like he should bring up any of those to sort of back up here versus Angreifen's armor. Well, he needs to commit deeper flanks with the T for the force rather than trying to attack head on because. Once it gets two, two, two Stukes going together, they can really just quickly tear through enemy armor. Enemy so definitely needs to be switched from attacks, I think, there by Gat here versus Angarven. Again, we saw the, you know, how good one, effective one good flank assault could be there. So I'm surprised he's not trying to you know, repeat that a bit more efficiently. But there you go. Guards have anything heavy hits from the command tank. We've got the flak punch yawning as well there, exposing the guards there to a lethal fire of quite the magnitude. 
chasing the eastern field for victory point there. There you go. Double streak so as the T Fed falls from six, quickly taking it down to half elf. And that Stug is almost ace level there. Field and joining in the pension hit on the Stug easy. Another hit there, T Fed fall though. Close one there by Hansen away. The field gun on the hand is close to death. And there you go. We got rocket strikes going in there. Close one there by Gaswell with the Stug Stu managed to dodge it. Stug is almost ace level, and we got there. Eight in from the kills, two the kilometer kills. Comes to this mortar in the east. 30 for four there for Gat and the Red Arm in the 10th Mechanized Core. Let's see if we feel like there's a need for another tactical approach. We actually got another one, then I'm going to go these. In fact, down to just one in the Pentagon of these for the Panzer Rex. So, I mean, Gat has been doing some infinite killing there. We go second, third guard squad, they're getting Vetsony 2. Flat comes to the Commander and again laying down heavy and terminal fire there against the conscripts. Eight kills and eleven kills. Oh, managed to ground the corner there just in time though he had to leave behind his friend there who got absolutely shredded by the Flat Panzer. Got an M4 to the lying about in the opening could grab that. That'd be I think helpful there versus Angai from just a tad. There you go. Third T fit four round, putting at three T fit fours and one field gun versus two Stukes and Ospin and a command tank. Plus we pull some pantry tracks. As you can get caught by the T fit fours. Stukes there being repaired. We got 221 was another 53. Uncrafting man build up a nice victory point lead here versus Gat. And again, I feel like needs to try and scout out some of Gat's line, then sort of find the best spot to attack with because at the current moment, he's just feeding Ungard and experience and, you know, kills, and that's not really something he wants to do, particularly not the Stug. He should not be feeding the Stug as much vegetable gun as fast as possible, because that only gets mean. I mean, eventually, if the, the Stug becomes really good with a good rate of fire and good mobility, which makes it very lethal, and if you get two A Stugs, I mean, most armor might as well just kiss their asses behind and just goodbye, just, you know, write a nice little will there. Because two eventually three Stugs is just going to tear for armor. Like collar through 18th century London. Pioneers are going for the northern victory point. Guards are under fire from the flat pants, the command tank again. A lethal combo there, and there go. almost wipes the entire guards airborne squad. Again, he needs to flank more, he needs to stop attacking head on there. Go. We got one T for going for, I would say, with a shallow flank, and the rest of the force there is not caught in well with it. Resulting in, while he could even have done some heavy damage here, he just pulled it off correctly. Instead, he ends up feeding one tank there, trying to grab an and then the rest forces full up. He, they sort of get focused down there. So, while I like the idea, I would say the execution here left a lot to be decided here by Gat, and I hope he decides not to keep pushing this. He's actually caught off the assault. It does seem to have at least had some effect. It's causing Angarv Net to call back here, so that's good. Well, I'm not entirely sure I'd say that was fully worth a T-54 from the 6. And a rocket strike. Need to get the T-54 out of there because we've got the Stugs moving in. Again, including the Ace Stug. Guards continuing against the Carp Point. But we got the awesome way there. Betting 2 on the second one as well. T-54's going to continue the assault. There we go. t was going to try and rush here. Going to try and sneak past them. Can they pull it off here? Of course, the H Duke is much harder to outmaneuver due to its higher speed. Nice hit from the field gun there. Main gun on the T-54 that's down, and there you go. Abandoned, even just one T-54, there's two Stukes. Still ends up falling back into the field on the flank. T-54 wreckage there, destroyed entirely. Still, that was not good there for Gat. He is quickly bleeding out here. That's Angarten and the Sturmgeschütz are proving to be quite formidable, and of course, the flat panzer, of course, as well to the infantry. T Fed Force from 6 there, rapidly backpedaling. Back here, we got troops healing and forcing as Gat tries to reorganize his forces for another assault there to throw out the fascists. Stupid there, getting veterans you want. The 210 versus 98. I really feel like a couple of Vision 6 or something like that would help Gat out a lot in some of these cases, but that's just me. I can just some better flanks. Because the cleaning as I do, it just it seems to prefer not to do it most of the time. Command tank almost fixed up. Now he needs to fix up the Stugs. I'm sure the less veteran Stug has suffered quite a lot. <coughs> My apologies there. 19 kills, 27 kills still. Hold here by the MD42. Flat Panzer moving in as well. 
Also note here this time I'm take to steal the mortar away from Angreifen. Team Fed 4 on the flank being seen repairs. Very good. Quick response here though to the harassment on the far right there. Guards airborne being intercepted in a few moments here by the flak panzer. And the command saying they're good just terrifying a literal storm of shrapnel and whatnot. They're apparently getting quite lucky, but there you go. Out in the open now, they are easy targeted at the flak panzer. Got the committees nearby to support as well. Guards airborne are taking heavy damage. Got another T-54 from 6 on the way here for Gat and the Red Army as the guards airborne just run for their dear lives. Push for the center pumps to go out there before two more today is not able to support here, at least not moving effectively. Gonna just quick moving in. Retreating his word, probably about Stroog's backing up the Ospin and the uh, command tank, though they are currently behind here, so it's not gonna happen. But I can understand why Gat might just you know, think, oh, dear, they're gonna be quickly following up this. I need to get my T 34 away. Northwestern victory pumping sees as well here. The situation is looking dicey. We've got an ace field going by way of bombarding. Ungrabs MD42, they're forcing away. Almost got the ace. Sturm Geschutz fixed up once more. T4 will be engaged for the command tank on the flank panzer. Guards able on here pinned or suppressed but slowly pinned down here. Imagine soon enough. Stug moving ahead. Fun fact about Stugs was apparently sort of not uncommon for the crew to actually just remove the ammunition racks and just store more ammunition that way. So they would usually store close, I think, something like 100 rounds, though. I don't know if they would have followed the official distribution of rounds. It would have been roughly, I think, two thirds armor pit high explosives and then one third armor piercing rounds. They probably would have just stuffed in more armor piercing rounds, though, I imagine. But you know, sort of a little fun fact there. Stukes are moving in here for the T 54 from Sixes. There you go. Northern one taking hits here from the Stukes. There you go. Ace one blitzes ahead. Here we got the field moving up. The Stukes actually end up moving faster here than it can deal with. T 54 from almost down. Hit to the Ace Stukes and the regular one. T 54 shoots, bounces off somehow on the side armor. Need some support here to deal with the field gun. Flat pants are also command tank couldn't move in, but they're not quite fast there. Just close to the two there. Stuke moving ahead again. Guards able here taking heavy fire. Though somehow most of the shots are missing, which is sort of impressive. H Duke falling back. Guards able there being routed. The pressure is intense here. Field gun trying to deal with the field guns up here. Oh, the Stuke's up here, close to the on the other one. Oh dear, looks like someone almost got crushed. There they go. Betching two on the other Stug. 70 versus 201. Going up here on the flank with flat pants. The command in there you go. Mortar down. Phil can put me next on this. Moving in there. Rough grenading. Very good. Stug's still holding back all the way they can. Phil gun down. And there you go. With that. Gats render. So these retreats. GG. Game over. A loss here for the Red Army. A victory for the German Army. A nasty fight here on. Lost glider with some good action between the two sides. They good use of Stukes and the flak pants behind Gryphon. They do feel like Gat partly lost there because he just never flanked at times. And again, I would have liked to see one guard squad with something. machine. I think they've given some more flexibility there and some more options with just quickly flanking and doing some heavy damage to Angreifen. And I also feel like at least one Eshin 6 Eshin 5 would also done him a lot of good here versus Angreifen. At least one more field gun. I feel like that was one of the bigger misses there in Gat's forced composition. But there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned something from it. If you did, subscribe, like, share, comment on it, tell your friends, tell your family, but don't tell your enemies. This is Imperial Links and Cheers. Thank you for watching. You're all a wonderful audience. Hope to see you all tomorrow again for another awesome episode.